Now, it looks like that champion is going to be on the bench for a long time. Rise, the response on the opposite side. Yeah, very rough to deal with. We also have to remember these guys uh, have been practicing, but to practice all these niche picks here in the mid lane, top lane, all these compositions, it's very hard for them to go through them all because you want to keep things relatively constant. So when you scrim, you want to keep maybe three variables and uh, three constants and two variables. So you play a new jungler, maybe a new top laner, but so you can't really practice everything at the same time because then you don't really know the effects it has on your gameplay. So maybe Nuketuck hasn't really played the Vladimir too much besides to just ban it out himself. Yep, at the end of the day, Echo gonna follow as well. Kindred and Nidalee, jungle priority. Manning relatively high, of course. Must pick, must ban champions. I mean, Trundle is definitely going up in value here for top lane. Um, we have Bard combined. Um, Rek'Sai, of course, a huge yeah. priority internationally. Who am I missing? What support's really good? Bard and... Braum? Braum, yeah. I'm like blanking. I was like, which is the other support? That's everybody like, the B one. one. The B. The one right here. Just follow the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> one letter at a time, Kreppel. Yeah. You'll get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so rude. <laughs> Let's go for C right now. Can you name a champion with C? No. Cassio, <laughs> thank God. I was like, no, I can't. I'm blanking. I can see your predicament now. Of course, Trundle going to ah, be... It's not so easy now, is it, Sifa? <laughs> Don't put me on the spot, man. Of course, Trundle coming out in the first pick, Maokai. Yeah. Cabo. Cabo's no hesitation. Favorite champion. Of course, Fnatic now probably going to take their time here on the opposite side. A lot of power picks left open and available. I have to see where they shift their priority. Braum, the first lock-in for Yellowstar. One of those huge support picks we talked about. Lucian to follow. Mm -hmm. That is a terrifying bot lane. Yeah, really good core for Fnatic to go into any direction. You can play the 1-3-1 one -one style, team fight, anything. Anything works with Lucian here. Um, I have a skin predict from Cabo to Meow, 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 he says. He's going to play Meow Kai. Meow Kai. Is that something? I feel like Riot released that skin for, for professional players to at least find some joy <laughs> and just having to play what? this Maokai. Oh man, it's so fun. You push your buttons, no one takes any damage, you don't take any damage, and the game continues. And then you win your team the game. You flip a coin, is my team winning? Yes, I will win this game. <laughs> Are we losing? Well, sad. Team fight approach though here for Vitality. Lissandra mm. Maokai really large on the backline threat. Surprisingly, Mighty Bear is still playing Graves. Just a champion that we haven't really seen Across the yeah. board, I mean, the least, least sin. Rek'Sai all open right now. Yeah, with Kindred and Italy taking off the table so often, these more team fighting, more poke, or rather, more pick oriented options tend to go to the top. But Mighty Bear opting for this farming style jungler. He's damaged though, because Lissandra has some damage, but mm. obviously falls off a tiny bit. Maokai, Sturdy, and CC. So they complement two CC components with a raw damage component, and that makes sense for Vitality. Yeah, and yesterday in their second game, we saw this similar core, but with the Kindred instead of the Graves. And to be honest, Cabo and Nuketuck were always forward making those plays, and Mighty Bear was always there to back up with damage. So it seems like a nearly identical strategy coming out. But on the opposite side, Febivin and Fnatic look maybe to play more towards the early game with this early Lee Sin pickup. Yeah, they still have the late game insurance of Azir. The late game Azir with Cleanse is uh, very hard to deal with. Honestly, Comfort picks around for Fnatic here. Braum for Yellow Star that he did better on the, uh, yesterday compared to some uh, games that he had over in North America. Obviously improved a lot towards the end of the split uh, with team, C uh, team Solo mid. This time he doesn't have the Fates call though to help him, but Braum Lucian, fairly potent lane if he can stack the stuns. Yep. Let's and see what Vitality round up now. I have to wonder. Focusing. One day I hope you logged in, but today is probably not that day. Thinking about it though, the composition seems things. I, I like the shift away from the Callista. While Reckless did do some amazing work on it, I feel like the Lucian yep. is overall just so much more powerful. Vitality, they're looking to make some responses here. They're going yep. to pick up the Ezreal as well as the Karma here as their final rotation. What do we say to the God of Time? Not today. It'll be a Karma <laughs> instead. Ezreal Karma is such an annoying lane to lane against. There's honestly, you can all in if you manage to catch one of them, but then there's at least the exhaust. Oh. Um, surprise Zach pick here from Gamsu out of nowhere. This is a new one. We haven't seen Zach in a very long time. Does fill up that tanky slot, offers a lot of team fight presence, but why do you think this pick is coming out now? I mean, you get some backline threat and unpredictable ganks here, at least from Gamsu, but he'll be locked out. Um, unless he is a, a big lane counter against Maokai, I don't see why though. He has to spam spells to get damage. Yeah. Maokai heals up. I, I don't know if this is going to be favorable. Do you think Fnatic are going to look for a swap here? No, he can probably push. Uh, Fnatic should probably swap. Not so much of the top lane matchup, but more so of the bottom lane. But obviously, Zach should probably be able to push in Maokai roll mid and add pressure there. Uh, if Fnatic is not careful, she can get knocked up. 
when she wants to proc her E. Like if you wait until E is halfway and then press knock up, she won't be able to uh, proc it afterwards. If she procs it instantly, she'll still be uh, within range of you being able to chase her. So it's very, uh, can be annoying for Nuketark to get out of that one. Very difficult mechanical decisions are going to be coming up with the amount of CC present on the Fnatic lineup between the Lee Sin and the Zac, the Braum. After one, you see the coach shake hands, walk away. You know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. Get on Twitter, hashtag VITWIN if you think the new imports here are going to be enough. Or if you think the return of Yellowstar will rocket Fnatic to the top, tweet out hashtag FNCWIN as we gear up for our first game in this second series here on EU LCS2. Yeah, I like this pivot at the end here. Change to double poke range lane, annoying, really hard to catch, very slippery too. Speed boost from shields, arcane shift. I like it as well. The Ezreal ult, of course, adding more damage to your already strong AoE engage when you pair it with the Graves. Karma giving you the pseudo Sivir ult. So. Yeah. 131 available too uh, for Vitality. We have a little bit of a pause here, guys, so bear with us. Mm -hmm. um, later in the game, they can put Nuketuk on the side lane. That is the one weakness of a zero composition is that you always have to either go for a 4 1 style or you need to do like a 1 1 3 where your, your three man unit is playing on a side lane. And that's generally not preferred. The whole power of, of the 1 3 1 comes due to the fact that then your three man unit can fan out or split up in the mid lane, go left, go right, take control of the map, you know, from the center. Um, obviously, late game Vitality have more uh, plays to be made there. But they need to be careful on team fights. It's really hard to get to Lucian and Azir with the amount of peel here. Lee Sin Kick, Gamsu uh, peeling as well. Yawa start blocking some spells here. It will be needed though because there's a lot of backline threat at the same time. Yep. So it all comes down to whether Cavo and Nuta can connect with Febivan. Multiple spells being used on him because he is running that cleanse. Definitely, and I think the thing that we have to be aware of is if he wasn't, this would be an insanely difficult lane because we've seen the Lissandra Graves combination yeah. for so long. When Graves came to the top, Lissandra did too because it was so easy to just point and click these kills away in the mid yeah. lane. Jahu MLXG um, ran a lot of similar stuff at the start of spring over in the LPL for RNG. So there's definitely plenty of damage there. But we're going into game. You can hear the fan chants. This is it. Game one. Vitality on the blue side. Fnatic on the red. Members rushing out of the base. Calls for Fnatic coming in strong from the crowd. Have they paid attention, Vitality? Have they done their VOD review? Are they afraid of brushes? Because yesterday, for people that missed it, Yellow Star flashed out of the bush to go for an instant exhaust into auto. Uh, and then his target, Maxilor on the Elise. Reactionary flashed out, was still slowed, the Q connected afterwards, and Yellow Star basically gave Fnatic a free for his blood with that strategy. So really strong invade with his Braum, not afraid to both use Q and Exhaust. And together. you can see, we talked about the land swap, how crucial it could be for Fnatic. Mighty Bear waiting in the brush. Early trades, nothing committed quite yet. Just Vision will be exchanged in the end, but Vitality have to be careful here. Go the slow. Mantra. Get that extra gold. Yeah, that's it. Soul Flare. Kasing happy to proc a couple stacks. <laughs> Not going to make too much of a difference. If only our gold didn't like round down on top of the board, we could see exactly how yeah. far. I want, I want all the digits. <laughs> give me all the digits. <laughs> it's a little early for me to give you <laughs> my digits, Sifa. I didn't want to come on that strong, but you set me up so perfectly. Of course, Yellowstar and Reckless now shifting their attention down to the bottom lane. Vitality hoping to predict the lane swap, it looks like. Moving on to the top side to Sing. Going to be a nuisance. Ooh, you have to be careful. They could turn on him right here. Okay, level 2 Lee Sin. Easily. They're not going to opt for it, though. It looks like they're giving a lot of respect here. Yeah, just a lot of respect. Vitality have the tempo advantage. It was like, people find a new way to say tempo. <laughs> Their lane swap is a lot more speedy. <laughs> See, huh? They got the speedy swap down. The speedy swap. And now we're looking at Nuke Duck. Get bullied out of lane here. Febivin, this is some unrelenting aggression. Have Quick level you two. you met my soldier? Every time. So really good power here from Febivin. No early cheese ganks either. Cabochard, really enjoying his game. First they lock him, first with Maokai. Then he gets to take the scenic route of Summer's Rift. It's like, yeah, that's still the jungle. Still the tri-bush. <laughs> Walks up, hits two minions, and then has to wait and freeze the wave. Mm -hmm. 
course, coming out, you can see a lot of the on the tower. Can't quite see who's ahead just yet. Don't need to see it. You can tell by the champions. Speedy swap. <laughs> Speedy swap a rook because of all these AoE. Look at it. Yep. You got saplings. You got karma cues. You got Lucian double tap. You got, ah, uh, yeah, but you're right. AoE coming in bigger in the end. Vitality. Cabo going to try to bounce this wave off the tower. Is he going to succeed? Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Two more. One more. Let him get it. Look at that oh, bounce. look at that auto. He faked out. Denying it in the end, of course. Relatively similar timing overall, so no major advantage gain either side. Oh, he's yet. actually pushing immediately here. So if if uh, Vitality read this, they can actually send Cabochard immediately to the bottom lane right here, and he can soak up all that farm. Uh, because Gamsu did the greedy thing where he instantly starts pushing. But that is. Yeah. That's Cap about as exciting as the lane swap gets. Like, oh, they're gonna abuse uh, this farm. This four freeze. more creeps. The chance to swap lanes. Yeah, they don't. Put it on police instead. Have to be down here. I like the skin choice. You mentioned it. Meowkai is predicted. We got Striker yeah. Ezreal. Police, a fan of the classics. Striker Ezreal, uh, resembling which sport exactly? Don't make me say it. Don't make me do it. Football. Exactly. It's called football. Yeah. I'm going to see you cast a Schalke game. <laughs> and be like, yes, yeah, uh, famous soccer organization, Schalke and Fear. Oh, God. Or you would be like, oh, four. It'll be great. I'll be the first uh, eSports personality to be hated across multiple sports. <laughs> that could be a life achievement that I hope to live yeah. up to someday. But of course... Piss off as many fans as you can <laughs> in one broadcast. <sighs> I'm just trying to... <laughs> I'm so cautious with my words. I'm like, okay, don't say anything stupid after that. Police and Kasing, though, they're pushing the bottom lane. There you go. <laughs> what? Fantastic statement there. <laughs> yeah, they're pushing again. Phase 2 of the lane swap. Nobody matching... Uh, AD carry versus AD carry again. Sometimes we see it in this meta where people start playing around the dragon, especially when it's something like a mountain drake. But yeah, if you're Yellow Star and Reckless right now, you still want to avoid uh, Ezreal and Karma. They're they're getting really annoying to deal with. Maybe at level six, yeah. that's when you swap into them because Karma doesn't get a big power spike. Police's ultimate gets negated entirely by the E from Yellow Star, getting yep. an R for an E. Never what you want to be doing. Yep. Of course. Even Scrabble, not what you want to be doing. Do you actually know the point value for Scrabble letters? Or you just, I was like, I don't. I mean, who is going to call me out on that one? <laughs> Let's see if. Uh, At Scrabble fan on Twitter. Who are you? <laughs> Stay to your own game. You piss off sports. I, uh, I take the board games. These the serious board gaming uh, fans. They're crazy. Man. You don't mess with them. <laughs> Gomsu, of course, once again, shifting around. Uh, just the, the continually mirroring here. And now it feels like the map really opens up. What do you think the next big play is on either side? Yeah, they just train, uh, trade the speed advantage that they uh, have managed to get here on these towers for Dragon. They peeled off earlier. That's why their tower falls later. But in the meantime, they just get a free mountain break. And that's actually going to be great for this vitality composition. Because, um, yeah, they, they're really good at defending objectives too. Imagine if you have to walk into a Baron area or a Dragon area later on. Uh, you'll be very scared to walk into a Maokai, walk into on uh, Nutox Cassandra here, and then they can burn it down later on yeah. with maybe a potential extra mountain drake. Right. And you have to go in, right? Because the, the speed is just, it's so quick to burn I mean, down those objectives. And a second mountain drake is going to spawn as well. Yeah, they will need the mountain drakes for that though, because innately their comp isn't the quickest. Lissandra and Maokai don't really burn objectives that fast. Nor does uh, Ezreal really Ezreal either. isn't being the best sieger either, so... Uh, helps. Need more mountains. Yeah. One on the way. Just a oh. few minutes. <laughs> and there's more coming. Second dragon will also be a mountain drake. Of course, Spirit moving in, trying to continue to counter jungle as best as he can. Has a decent CS lead over Mighty Bear. An optic for the yeah. trackers instead of the challenge it's fine. That's a trade-off. If you do that drake, obviously enemy jungle will still be jungler. Just uh, caching in here. And now Fnatic is opting and taking control of the bottom side. Reckless babysitting his support. Kasing taking the safe path around, so oh. respect everywhere. Comes out of the bush just barely. Just wants to be on the edge of it. Steps a little bit too far, so no surprise ganks here on the bottom side. But clearing out the vision nonetheless. New deck, now that he's hit that level 6 point, looks a yep. little more comfortable in lane. Not behind in CS at all, despite the pressure. From and now Reckless and Yellowstar should be fine laning. They'll be approaching level 6 where the calling threat uh, has to be respected by Vitality. They need to keep their distance. Their ultimates can be negated. Yellowstar can soak up a lot and later has access to CC too. So obviously the difference in items too, tier, versus raw damage. In all these situations, Fnatic can beat that matchup now. Moving up. 
Maybe, they're, maybe hoping to make a play here. Gomsu though, quick hop out. My people need me. <laughs> Plastic slingshot to safety. It's been so long since I've seen Zach, I forgot he had the chromas. Bubblegum Zach versus Maokai. It's a serious top win. They're at least going to have fun with the skins. Legends, <laughs> take our battle seriously. We've got, you know, Ice Queen, Sand Emperor, Cat Tree, and Bubblegum. Also, allegedly, Zach's sound effects are created in a pretty unique way. <laughs> Demon alluded to it once on cast. I'm actually not sure. If <laughs> it's true. People want us to repeat that. No, I don't think you need to. Uh, it's out there. Uh, you can research it. It just, uh, yeah. Definitely uh, creativity, creativity comes through. Like, imagine if you walk into a board meeting. Guys, <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> this champion, I know I've how got a million dollar ID. Maybe they're like, this is how we want to make sound effects. They're like, we can build a champ around that for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> it all started with the core pitch. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now I feel like we have to say nope. it, but it's still so inappropriate. Nope. All right. Lucian Oop. here pushing the... <laughs> <laughs> Every time you run out, you just talk about what's on the screen, Crab. This is play-by-play -play secret number one. There's about 10-ish ranged creeps, Ezreal alt, Reckless Auto. Well, you gotta, you gotta call it what's, uh, you know, um, True Shot Barrage. True Shot Barrage, yes. Gone are the days that you just simply could say QWER. I feel like they come back, though, because there's so many team fights where you can't be like, True Shot Barrage, Arcane Ship, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Like, just like word vomit. Sometimes the designers really are the bane of play by plays. Oh my god. Yes. Can't wait for Urgot to return. <laughs> That's see the funny thing about that is the names are so bad that it's like a, a point of pride for every play by play to know what they are. Quickshot loves his hyperkinetic position oh. reverser. Position reverse here for Nuketok 2. Goes in with the E, gets knocked back by Fevin's ultimate. So aggressive moves, no cleanse burn from Febby in the air in the end though. Just happy to trade that all for his life making sure to stay safe and game very even at this yeah. stage 15.1 15.7 no notable advantage this is still early game where Fnatic will need to or will look for maybe some pickoffs um, like they did yesterday but they really dodged the rough matchups they also kept the Maokai down a little bit so Cavalier's backline threat or ability to soak a lot of damage is reduced too so I think Vitality definitely got the shorter end of the stick with the flame swap you can see in the top lane though, Gamsu not going to be able to keep up that pressure. Cabo most likely going to be able to even up the farm here just because of the item differentials. Gamsu has not found an opportunity to back. Yeah. It is paramount right now for Fnatic to really keep track of their flanks and see where the wards are. If they can just avoid being flanked with teleports, either Kappa Shard or Nuke Dog, they should be in the clear. If they can take the fight on kind of from the front door, see everybody coming, then they can carry back and deal in fights. You know, kick somebody out if he flanks. Yellow Star soaks up as much damage as he can. Let's see a uh, sport classic. So what is your strength here? If you're applying for support school, yeah, I, I'm I'm just really good at eating skill shots. No 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 no. It's it's I'm I'm so good at Braum Shield that I throw it the wrong way just just to DM my opponents. Yeah. That's been my, my experience. Point it somewhere, hope it sticks. <laughs> Doesn't work out so Go well. For a little moonwalk. <laughs> of course. Setting our sights back on the game. Rift Herald is going to drop over for Cabo Shard, and this is a huge boon for him on the top side. People, yeah, it, it gives you damage reduction. One, one, hang on. Spirit gets oh. knocked down. Spirit tries to get Cabo out, but it's not going to be in the right direction. Tries to make it to safety. First blood to Vitality and Kasing. That's a big misstep there for yeah, Fnatic. Misstep, mistake from Spirit. You just heard the notification that Rift Herald went down. You know that this Herald got buffed. It's a lot harder to take down, so that requires multiple people involved. You also look at your minimap and nobody's really visible. That's when you know they're they're there. And you face tech right onto that's a bold move from Spirit. Overextends. Didn't manage to flash out. Really good ulti from police too. I think he kinda was predicting the, the flash. So watch this again. So he knows Harold is down, he goes to the ward. Right now he could flash. He would flash into the cabbage shot anyways, and he would have flashed into the ulti, so no room for escape, and that's just a mistake that we kinda saw at the start of spring two from Spirit. Yep. Was playing a style very similar to Trick on G2 at the time, very uh, focused on deep warding, you know, uh, and farming a lot more than other jungles. But then he would uh, ironically get caught a lot because there wasn't enough pressure from his other lanes. And that's kind of something we see right now. Maybe not due to the ability of the players, but just due to the picks that they've gathered. Fnatic don't have that early pressure. And you can see Vitality pretty comfortable at this stage just to send Nuke down to the bottom lane, start up that split pressure. Kasing moving in to clear out the vision. Second Mountain Drake has spawned, and this is a pretty big point of contention. 
one of the much more important drakes, Mountain, Infernal, something that you absolutely have to test. I yeah, definitely want to get them because this comp, as we talked about before, is actually innately very bad at objectives uh, in terms of speed of clearing. But they obviously can defend them very well. Wealth of CC. Kabashard is going to take the walk down so he can teleport back to the top lane. Have him in the front as peel. So vision denial here. They don't just want the dragon here. Setting up for the boo buff as well. Change the timers. Don't really want to use your smite here though. If you're Vitality. Don't want to use it on the side of the here though. Spirit is going to in the end. That's good. Smite down on jungler. So that means you can comfortably start the, jungle, uh, the dragon too. You also deny the blue buff from Azir. Like, Vitality don't need the blue buff from Nuke though. They also don't care that Spirit got it. So overall, that's a win. Right now, they can comfortably start the dragon. They just need to defend their choke points. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any contested yeah. effort here at Ever. Reckless farming up the bottom lane. Gamsu taking uh, his time to farm the top. You said that they wanted to wait. They didn't want to find flanks. And it looks like they're just going to keep trying to stall this game out moving forward. But Mountain Drakes, you may not see that on the gold difference there, but that's a huge advantage moving forward for objective control. Yeah, already 20% extra true damage to both turrets and epic monsters. Herald's gone, so only dragon. And Baron. And eventually punisher. Baron. We got six minutes. We'll uh, be online eventually. And again, they're finding out to the 1-3-1. This is what we talked about in Champs like Very clear goals here in these team compositions. Lissandra on the side lane, Maokai on the other. Both Ezreal and Karma combined can always wave clear at least two waves. So they have a full minute that they can buy time. Uh, unless Yellowstar walks up and bo blocks this, uh, these skill shots with his e, these projectiles, he can destroy them. But looking at this, I mean, Vitality have gotten everything that they want for split pressure here. They can take the towers down fast with the Mountain Drakes. They have the glimpse of the Void buff on Cabo Shard, who was struggling in that lane for a period of time and now is going to easily be able to win out. The goal for them isn't to really get those towers, though, in a split push. Split push in, in this season isn't any more about taking down side lane turrets really with these comps. It's more about just pressuring the waves, forcing people to fan out themselves, and then creating a numbers advantage with a double teleport. You know, when you have two versus one teleports, eventually you just want to outnumber the opponent, or you push them in, and then you go for a flank. You walk, you know, that's why vision denial is important. You're also comfortably farming all three lanes at once. Fnatic later on may have times in the game where they're not comfortably farming all the lanes because right now if a fight breaks loose somewhere reckless can't join cabochar can definitely not a place where you want to be reckless also mostly just forced to push out those waves but fanatic they're trying to make moves yeah looking to rotate on top maybe if cabochar extends through a wave there is enough defensive vision here I'm just laughing at the cat pajamas. Like, <laughs> it's just such a great skin because it's not. It's it's the core of Maokai is there. He just literally has cat pajamas on. Do you own cat pajamas, Sifa? No, I don't. Do you wish you owned cat pajamas? Pick up our Gamsu oh. dope, bubble gum. About to get chewed up. Try to get out of there. Let's bounce. Going to be used. Just running away to safety. A comedic exit at best, but we'll walk away with his life there in the end. Quite a disappointing turnout of events. Although Vitality fans are used to that by now. Wow. Well, maybe fair at this stage. The huh? fact that nobody got angry about that in the cloud. It's like <laughs> very heavily like, favored yeah. to watch the yeah. They're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Choose your battles. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Moving in. Police and Kasang, as you said, resigned to wave their duty. 131, unfolding exactly as expected. And Fnatic, happy to farm the waves comfortably for now, but looking forward towards that Baron towards these, these kind of power points coming in for Vitality, potentially. Yeah. Seems like they're going to have to make some moves here at some point. Fnatic have some breathing room. Next Dragon is Cloud, it seems like. I mean, you're not always happy to see it, but definitely got two mounts at the start, so you got to pay your due diligence to get at least one Cloud Drake game. <laughs> it's kind of the, the tax at the end. Yeah. Like you're in a store and buy some. Oh, that's cheap. That's nice. And then you get the Cloud Drake tax. Nope, there's more. If you want more good stuff, you gotta <laughs> pay up. It's a rough life for those content to take the dragons when the Cloud Drake spawns. It's like, ah, I guess we'll take it. A little bit of poke here. This is obviously the strength of Azir. When outnumbered, he's one of the best champions that's still managing to wake clear because mm. nobody wants to walk up next to the soldiers. And if everyone is allowed, just a little bit of time to move up and challenge the wave as it comes in, he can clear it out. 
It's when Azir is at risk of being flanked that he can no longer walk up to challenge the wave in the middle of the lane. That's when you can see Jonathan Azir, and that's also what Vitality will be looking on later on on these long lanes. See if they can flank. Like obviously, at all costs, wants to avoid that with those ward setups. Yep, definitely have the setup there. Spear getting aggressive and moving forward. Maybe hoping to get some cooldowns. Gomsu just continuing to push out the top lane. Cabo going up to respond. So teams moving towards the mid lane, ready for a fight if they're given the opportunity, but neither side going to find purchase there. Yeah, and because the game is, it's moving very slow because everybody's very afraid of, of being the one strangler here. Oh, uh, move forward, isn't going to land the Glacial Bite. Oh, maybe the alt, no, Nuke Duck. Fancy footwork, has to burn the flash in the end, but just traded for Yellow Stars. Yeah, respect flash here, that is necessary. Because the game goes so slow, we'll see supports base a lot, more often, because they're the only players really carrying sidestone in this meta. You move out, you place your wards, that gives you safety to move up far further, but if you have nothing to place further, why would you even go there? You know, so you always to place your wards, base up, go back again. So it often takes post 20 minutes for anything to happen, because then supports have access to the free home guards, and vision lines start moving up a little easier in these very slow games. Yep, you can see Fnatic with a lot of that vision on the bottom side, keeping Reckless safe as he starts to push in here. Vitality on the opposite side, focus around this mid lane, want to know that they're free to pressure out. The top lane duels continue, but so much to stand on both sides. Cabo winning out. Yeah, it's and a mini game of whack-a-mole. If you're Cabo Shard, you want to get on those little blobs. Otherwise, any damage you've just done, Gams is going to get back. Gams wants to, you know, hit as efficiently as he can. Don't want to waste any Qs on creeps because the Maokai's passive is stacking up. This is, I think, the tankiest possible matchup we could watch. I don't think it's, you would have to step on every single blog to actually kill somebody. Go for the flash. At one point, you're just so tilted that you you're flash like a flash blob. blob. There you go, 55% HP, oh, so yeah. 60. Up 100 health in the tree. Of course, while they not be very action-packed, we always have to keep our eyes on this Lissandra moving forward. Cloud Drake has spawned. Pings are coming out from both sides. This could be the first large team fight. It could. They're moving in. Gut feeling tells me it won't. Maybe Fnatic really likes their Cloud Drakes. I feel like they haven't checked the pit. They're like, guys, we need to stop this dragon. Oh. Yeah, no, they <laughs> have it. It's fine. <laughs> Spirit, walk up. Word over the wall. Oh, I guess we're all right. Walk away. No, no priority. No love for the Cloud Drake. It's like, no, you take it. It's like, no, you know, after you. No, please. I'll tell you what, we'll trade you a tower for the Cloud Drake. Oh, I don't, uh, we don't want the tower. You just take the Cloud Drake, please. Can we just get a new dragon? <laughs> I think at this point it's better for Fnatic to just leave it up yeah. and delay the next dragon. Look at Nuke Duck. He's ready. Would Home Guards teleport here to punish? Nope. Mighty Bear has it started, but the vision is there. Both is top it? laners can cancel each other if they want to eliminate them from the fight here. Cabochar is dealing with a mini wave right now on your minimap. Oh, Spirit swooping okay. in. All right, Vitality overextending just a little Good bit. Good flash. In. Good flash, as you said. Saw it coming. He's going to walk away from that one. Quite the hesitation. Vitality had a teleport ready, but they had nobody to kind of control the fight. If they want to go for a teleport with Sandra play, they need Maokai in there to keep the fight controlled in an area because everybody else is just so scared. There's nobody that can buy four seconds of time for that channel. Um, by the time teleport lands, you're just dead. So, in the end of the day, Fnatic going to pick up that Cloud Drake. Vitality now moving onto this tower. They do a lot of damage with Double Mountain Drakes. Don't even need the creep wave there. Yeah. Have been zoned away. Cleanse not enough to keep him safe, and that's the uh, exchange. Very slow game here. And Febbin's the man to watch because he needs to carry these late game team fights. Uh, skip any potential early abyssal. Not scared of the all in of a nuke dog. Just going for the pure damage build here. Wildlife right, second. He needs to shine in the late game team fights because otherwise, just flash W from Cavish Heart is enough to deal with Reckless. He'll have a very hard time. Obviously, we'll have the peel from Yellow Star. Because yeah. Singh also falls off. Karma and Lincoln team fights is, yeah. Mantra to uh, Defiance, or Mantra to E into the Defiance. You don't see aggressive plays here. Jack moving in. Oh, miss from Yellowstar. Not what you want. Great all back. That's the quick pickup for Vitality. TP going to be canceled. Yellowstar oversteps. Yeah, what is, I, I was wondering what the, the purpose of that play was. How, how, even if that hits, is it going to play out? Or did they just simply overstep there? But that was very, um, Lackluster in approach. I mean, execution, you could say, like, yeah, he missed, but I think that the biggest mistake was being there in the first place. Yeah. 
Especially in such a slow game, you should be able to predict what's gonna happen. No real surprising moves here. So a little bit of a slip up. He'll start. Babavin dashing out to safety. Doesn't want to risk getting snared up there. Of course, looking at the gold score, you can see the 2k advantage just about for Vitality. Fnatic, they're leading in farm. They haven't been able to turn it into anything just yet. And now Vision being placed down around the Baron Pit. Vitality are well aware that they have the power to clear this one out with the double yeah. mountain drakes. Move to pinks right now. All right, so the Elster's there with Spirit. They're looking for... I mean, they're looking for a pick on Kasingdam reliably because chain CC on Nuketuk is such a risky thing to go for. At any point, he flashes or he, he self-casts R and your play is ruined. Didn't get a teleport. Kabashar and Gamsu both lost their teleports. That means Nuketuk on the side lane right now. That's This is going to be it for Vitality. They have half the teleport cooldown worth of time for Nuketuk to get somebody in the side lane, reveal him, and then go for a teleport play on Baron. Maybe pick somebody out. Definitely an option. You can see Gamsu going down to maybe match the pressure coming in from Lissandra. Zero Tower doing what it can to defend the mid lane for now. He's actually getting his home guards, so... It looks like they will commit. I think they're going to start this Baron pretty soon. Maybe hoping for that Lissandra flank. They do have Vision here. Yeah, Great flank. They got a Yellow Star. Fight starting. Yellow Star potentially in trouble. Spirit, is he going to look for the disengage? Cabo taking a lot of damage. Ooh, that's a bad teleport from Nuke Duck. He arrives after the fight here. So Fnatic very happy with this. Failed pick attempt here. Yep. Too little, too late. Spirit looking for the kick. Police goes in. He goes out. He's going to make it to safety. Maybe looking to keep the fight going as they push yeah, forward. Flash R here. Ah, great play coming in from Noob Duck. Hits the team, but Gamsu ready with the turnaround. The rest of Fnatic is fleeing, and it's a small health advantage, but it's the one that Vitality won. Yeah, everybody could see the play coming. Very tense moment right there for one or two seconds there, and it was oh so close for like a quarter kill for Mighty Bear. His ulti barely misses in the midst of all that, but that was really good, uh, really good flash there from Noob Duck. I mean, Riding his time here, and right now Fnatic reduced to a vague steal attempt because their jungle is out of the equation. Not gonna get it. Vision only gonna let them saw see what they missed out on in a huge misplay. Yeah, this all started uh, with the bot lane play. Like Yellow start dying there through both teleports. Cabo teleport, Gamsu teleport off the mm. uh, or out of the equation right now. That means Nuketuk goes bot. He reveals Gamsu. That means Nuketuk then bases. Vitality set up for a numbers advantage Baron. Fnatic know that's gonna happen, so they have to face check, and that's what started the fight. Maybe they could have disengaged right after. Um, the second mistake there obviously was Spirit going in really deep. He kicks police in, but police managed to flash out. Reckless can't do anything in the bottom of his screen. Watch Nuke Tech right now. The second he turns, you know what's going down. Flash, W, self cross R, and then any more to the right, or if whatever person flashed right there, couldn't quite see it, got hit by that Graze ultimate, instant quad rat. So luckily, Fnatic only lose one member and the Baron, but even then, rough start for them. Yeah, definitely not where you want to be, especially with this Ezreal throwing out so much poke. Cabo moving forward, Yellowstar blocking what he can, but Vitality definitely in the driver's seat now with this Baron buff. It's going to be easy for them to take control. Haven't committed to a lane to push quite yet. Striker Ezreal scores a goal. <laughs> right in between the two posts. <laughs> Every time you mention anything related to football, I have to stop for like 10 seconds. Just like, be like, nope, don't, don't say, the S say word. anything stupid. <laughs> you're probably likely, you're likely uh, to get away with the, S, with the actual S words. <laughs> it's like, you can swear. A They're like, times. oh yeah, BM's fine. Just don't say the wrong Just, thing. Yeah, don't call our sports something they're not. Hey, you can swear on air. I've sworn a couple times. They still hired me. Maybe they were desperate. Maybe it was actually not my ability to actually talk about the game. Just needed some people. No, you're doing, no. you're doing good. They could, they could, for, they forgive you for your swears. Hey, what's going, man? Oh, moving in. Tries Ooh, to predict. Ooh, Febivan, really scared of that engage here. Just a looming threat on that ice claw. So much respect given over, but yeah. now no option to disengage if this fight does start. Relying on that kick from Lee Sin. Uh, the turbo rotation here. Kasing can feel useful on that karma. Picked up two kills too. Doha would be happy. Yep. Has to be happy with the bloodthirsty supports and vitality. More than content to pick up this tower. Looks like we could uh, 
Could see them push for more as we move forward. The Cloud Drake, of course, coming up as well. Vitality hoping to match Fnatic in that out of combat movement speed. <laughs> People <laughs> are going to get so tired of all these, like, mocking mentions. I'm, like, trying to make it serious, and I couldn't even keep it together. Next one is going to be a Mountain Drake, though, so just out of the range where the Elven Dragon would spawn. Well, that, is that actually a mistake? I think that, that would classify as a mistake here for Vitality. Hmm. Taking down the Cloud Drag here, instead of just keeping it up until 29 minutes, because that would guarantee that when you take it down, the next Dragon would spawn will be a very early Elder. Considering you have control of the map and you will likely have for quite a while, um, that could be your late game win condition. With a lot of champions that poke the burn and the double bonus from Elder, having it earlier in the game uh, could be much so to your benefit. Because right now, they're looking at a 33 and a half minute dragon coming up, so that's a, a much later Elder. Yeah, 39 and a half, almost 40 minutes, not quite where you want to be yeah, delaying that. Yeah, as opposed to maybe a, 30, a, a mm. spot on 35, so... That is something I think teams will need to start thinking more about, especially when the immediate gain from this Cloud Drake... It's not like they need the movement speed. Or, uh... Yeah, not going to be able to... Yeah, yeah movement speed. Yeah. I doubt... I, I, I confuse these all the time. I'm like, they're both so useless. Which one do I care less? <laughs> This is the Dragon's broadcast. This is a bit like my dad. No. <laughs> oh my god. No. no. <laughs> this is not a joke. We're on cast. This is, we're off we the cast. Keep in it the together. Bar. Keep it together. Of course. Vitality just continuing to push up here. Hoping to find small advantages. The, the gold lead for them, 3k at 29 minutes, is not massive. The dragons in their favor can be a big deal, but they haven't been able to put them to use quite yet. Yeah, it's just the control that they have on the game, and that is just a discussion that we just had as well, where they need another finisher. Like, they're charging up the bar. Yeah. Nuke Tuck right oh. now. Oh, <laughs> two and a half. Uh -huh. Two and a half more. Flash. Nope. Flash. Actually, Ooh. he's going to make it out. And now the collapse coming in for Vitality. Here's Cabo Shard. Moving forward. Q back. Lissandra coming back in. Round two, baby. Fnatic. Have they bitten off more than can chew? Yellow Star. Not going to drop. Collateral damage not enough either. Febovin dishing out what damage he can. But my god, just a trade of blows there on both sides. Yeah, and that's uh, got to feel bad because you can kind of tag Nuketuck right as he flashes. It's a really hard point to predict, but... You know exactly how long Sonius is gonna last. Maybe fan out a little bit more. If he can't kill him, he buys enough time. Good collapse here from Vitality. As we were talking about, they need a finisher. So they need another Baron or an Elder Dragon. Baron just two minutes away. You can see it on your screen now. Potentially that massive point of contention. Vitality looking for that team fight, looking for those flanks as we mentioned earlier. But Fnatic, if they find that strong front line, Zero, you've already seen it in that last exchange, can dish out. A large chunk of damage. Yeah, Banner of Command just being used here in the bottom lane too, like a sink. Obviously very hard to deal with. It's Febervin and Gamsu kind of clearing a lot of these waves. Four-man unit coming in from Vitality, just clearing out as much vision as possible. Yeah, let's get in the heads of Fnatic right now. Let's look at their vision. What, like, they don't have much. They have a couple of wards there that they could te technically teleport to for a flank, but they really want to take that fight. It's so hard for, for Gamsu to enter and, and do any damage because Police is so, mobi so mobile because he still has his Flash and his Shift available at all times. You can't go for Nuke Duck because it takes at least five seconds to kill him. Yeah. Because that's when he's invulnerable, so you need a little bit more than that. And to be fair, it feels like Zach is a, is a lackluster user of the Home Guard TP point. Yeah. Uh, Reckless. He's starting to get aggressive here. Spirit over the wall. Only in the Q there. Not going to follow up. Not looking for the kick. Aggressive move, because Sing takes half his health, but no greater advantage. It's actually really weird. So there was a sweeper lighting up Cabo Shard in the middle of a fight. You know, you saw the little animation? Yeah. I was wondering what triggered that. That must have been that smoke screen. So if you're in smoke screen, apparently you can still see sweeper images. Um, so if you want to test that at home. Next level. Because there's no reason there should be a sweeper image in a, in a team fight. If people are confused what we're talking about, when you use the sweeper on people in a brush, they reveal and you see their... Like silhouette. You see the silhouette and it updates yeah. slightly slower than it would if you could actually see You had it in the middle of a team fight. I'm like, we don't need the silhouette. I only see him. This is where we're at. Yeah. So the, many the dynamics that. of vision. Hey, man. They, they vision excites me. I knew you'd like what I'm saying. All right, man. <laughs> play by play. Go. <laughs> Fnatic, of course, setting their sights in this barren area. We talked about Vitality needing a win condition. Baron, the only one available currently. Fnatic know exactly where to put their vision in response. They have control for now. 
Vitality playing a little bit here on the back foot here as Gamsu starts to push in in the bottom lane. Uh, Nuketox flashes down, so that means his teleport flank is actually not that useful because he will always enter fights with an, with an ice claw. People can dash away from that. So I think Vitality is keeping the wolf pack together here mm. until the flash spawns. Or spawns. The flash comes back <laughs> up. Oh, flash. And then he can go for teleport flanks again. Yeah. Uh, that's likely what's going to happen here. Really no pressure on them to move immediately. The Baron always going to be solid win conditions for them. They're always going to want to look for flanks. They may look for a fight right now. Oh, Yellow Star caught. caught again, trying to disengage with the ult. Here comes Febby. Are they going to take the fight anyway? Exhaust. Duke Duck held his ultimate though, so Beta Bath here not over committing on Yellow Star, just going for the poke here. Really good presence of mind. Things coming down on Dragon Police alt. Just going to hit Gomsu. Oh. This is not bad for Fnatic though. Walking into a Zirzak is. Dangerous. They've lost complete control of the Baron area too. They want to challenge mid first, so there's no counter rotation. Cabo, Gamsu going Gamsu in. Gamsu in the back line. Cabo in the front. Not going to find it quite yet. Moving forward, trying to get some damage down. Gamsu burning down very quickly. Kasing looking for the snare. Neither side going to poke in quite yet. It's just a dance. Yeah, Fnatic really respecting the fact that if you go for a Baron play and you have a mid wave alive, you could just get uh, rushed down in the mid lane. And if you then if you call on your Baron buff, you lose your tower. So. Really sticking to the fundamentals of Baron baiting here. They have complete vision denial, except that one ward right now that they're pinging out in the pit. They don't know it's there. Oh, actually, Gamsu <laughs> leaps. No, I will do the job. <laughs> Fall on your sword, Gamsu. Sacrifice yeah. yourself for the team. Takes a little bit of damage. Still so tanky, though. No fight on the oh. immediate horizon. Of course, this is the third Mountain Drake of the game. Elder next up, if someone decides to take this down. But that's still six minutes away even if they take it down immediately. Fnatic maybe just want to keep this one up. Yeah. But also, 10% extra true damage on a team that is a very quick at taking Baron, especially at this point in the game. Maybe worth investing in. I don't think we're looking at stalling out more for six minutes. These guys are living in the moment right now. Mm. Yeah, will start continuing to play forward. Not scared. I like the little zoom in the ward for added dramatic. Suspense. It's like, is he going to down? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh. They reach it now. <laughs> Tru truly a thrilling experience. Reckless, of course, continuing to clear out the waves. Mashed on both sides. The pressure in the top lane comes in from Nuke Duck. We've seen this play before. The collapse coming in from Fnatic. Not very many members of Vitality left to respond to this. Are they actually going to be able to get him? Yellow start going deep for Vision. Soldier comes up. Fnatic just going to look to burn this one down. It's going to be a reasonably quick Baron with his yeah, ear and Lucian. Probably going to be it. I don't think Vitality is ready for this at all. Fnatic, they're late game scaling. Got that position on the map. Vitality's late to this party here. Nuketuck is getting caught in the top side too. He teleported in. Actually, you know, he, did he cancel? Oh, that was Cabo Shark. Oh, here comes the fight though. They're not going to give up the Baron for free. Vitality moving forward, but Nuketuck's alone on the top side. Cabo wants to be the front line. Mighty Bear backs off. Police backs off. Miscommunication. Nuketuck over the wall. Is he going to find a kill? They're going to grab one. Mighty Bear picks it up. Febibin's ready to turn this one around, but Fnatic are now running. Yeah. Defiance comes out. Spear Cabo taking decent flash. damage. Claw over the wall. We can't set your eyes on Nuketuck. Nuketuck blast! What an ultimate, Fnatic! They're getting ripped down. Another member drops. Spirit slowly burning in Vitality. They may not get the Baron, but they're happy to grab a kill. Spirit, Ooh. great sidestep. Bebby as well. That's some fancy footwork, but what is it worth? Yeah, really good dodging there at the end. That could have maybe been a lot worse for Fnatic. They pick up the Baron. There was a teleport, but it wasn't new tech. It was Kabashart. He was doing Gamsu at the start. And then Febben kind of got outmaneuvered in that fight by Nuketuck, really playing well with his Lissandra. Also, the fact that he keeps holding his ulti is imperative to Vitality winning these fights. Mm. I think Fnatic still come out ahead, though, with the Baron buff, because now they can challenge Dragon and later Elder. Yeah, and you see the immense vision control that they have coming down. They're going to pick up this Mountain Drake as well. And as you said, huge boon moving forward for this team. They can burn through towers and neutral objectives so quickly. We saw how quickly they burned down that first Baron. Yeah, there, there's likely to be a next Baron in this game. Uh, before it ends, so any Mountain Drakes you can pick up. Hmm. What is the next step for Vitality? Just waiting well, out this Baron? Yeah, waiting it out for sure, but we have to go back uh, and kind of see how Vitality let this happen. Yes, they're getting outscaled a little bit, but as that fight showed, they can still hold their own. They just got lulled into a false sense of security. So this was a teleport I was talking about. It was Cal the Shark. He's dealing with Gamsu right now. I need to track out Feverman. Now that's just over the wall here. Cabo Shark's holding the front. See what Nuketuck does. Like, he's kind of zoned out of the fight. Febrin's gonna try and like challenge him by going over, but then Nuketuck 
moves away from Fabi. There's a new oh, fight going new on. New fight though. going down. Gaonsu making gonna make an impact. Does he have the passive? Isn't gonna need it quite yet. Ezreal all going down. Won't be enough. Collateral damage will. The blobs pop. The Fnatic aren't out of this yet. Alt canceled. Yellowstar not gonna be able to get that one off. No disengage options. Cabo has the GA to pull this off. Vitality Pump come out with another team fight win. I really like Nuketuck's decision making in these fights. So many Lissandra see Illusion and they would have gone in there. Obviously, there is still QSS available, so Nuketuck would have to self-cost and would likely have gotten cleaned up. They trade Zac passive, Guardian Angel, and a support. We'll just throw that in there. <laughs> just a little extra, a like little the, plus one. It's like the tip. 6-0, the score for Vitality, but despite that, Fnatic's still very much in the game. We talked about scaling being in their favor, but the gold greatly in the favor of Vitality. 4K lead at 38 minutes. With this late game of zero in fights, it, for Nuketuck, it's all about playing with a shotgun. Go in, you know, unleash. Two blasts, that's it. Febu and, yeah, his artillery, automated weapon, continuously whacking away in these fights. So if he goes unchecked, Reckless right now, QSS available to win two. That's a big Zach. That is a big Zach. It's a very big play-by-play <laughs> -play comment of the day. He looks Woo! big. <laughs> Champion, very big. Big old piece of gum. Of course, Vitality just continuing to push in mid here. The game once again stalled out. These small fights not leading to too many greater advantages. Fnatic still very comfortable to start exchanges. Kasengi doesn't do too much damage, but he's still throwing out those mantra cues whenever he can. Yeah. Mortal reminder right now to on police because he knows he'll be dealing with the front line first, trying to get some somehow trying to get through that armor. Yeah. Bit of Rune King, two percent damage, so I'll kill the tank build for him. So he's struggling. Has to try for it, of course. No mortal reminder on the opposite side to slow down the Maokai from healing up in these fights, however. So. Maybe an item that Lucian will look to in the future, but I don't think he has the slots right now. Has to focus on burning down the squishier targets, because really, the only tank on this team right now is that is Cabo Shard. Yeah, Luke just buys time. He's technically not getting damaged, but he's, he's fulfilling the same role, mm -hmm. in essence. But uh, you see how it's shifted in terms of who has the control. Uh, yeah, right now, it has been Fnatic playing the tune. And Vitality being forced to dance to it for the first time in this game. They find themselves out rotating though. Getting some damage here. Minion Wave goes in. Kavashar wants to peel, but he has to be careful. He can only tank soldiers for a finite amount of time. Duck goes in, but he's on the wrong side of the wall. Has to claw out to safety. Just a little bit of damage traded. Gomsu looking for the flank. Ooh, Is he going to land it? Police. Good jump out. Cabo potentially in trouble. Here comes Lissandra moving forward. New Duck's kicked out of the fight. Fnatic. Going be looking for more here. They're just backing off. Reckless. On the front line, Mighty Bear not scared at all. Febbin oh, gonna use the flank here for Nuketuck though. Slow, great, comes in again. The flash every time. Will he get the ult off? No, Fnatic, they burn him down too fast. Cabo drops as well. They're turning this one around. Police running for his life. Spirit jumps forward. Sonic Wave not going to land. They're trying desperately to disengage, but Reckless, he does so much damage. And Fnatic now setting their sights on the mid lane. You can hear the roar of the crowd. The fans are happy to see the turnaround. Yeah, sadly for Fnatic, there's no Baron or Elder to take on the cusp of that fight. But they read the fight this time. Really good predict on the Ice Claw. They knew Nuketuck had to go in, because if he cancels there, he's baiting his own team. There's not enough presence of mind there um, to tell your team to back off or reaction time. So really good predict. Must have been the ultimate from Grom to really cancel the first and then pass the switch. Ultimate gets used early, so we need to see what happens to Nuketuck and how he gets knocked up right after. So he's gonna move to the side of the fight right now, going with the claw. Can he cancel it? What's gonna stop him? Oh, Gamsu with the read. The short term, like really short range E from Gamsu. Bought enough time for the Braum passive to be applied and fully stacked there. So Gamsu turn that fight around. If he doesn't make that play, there's not enough time for four concussive blow stacks to be made onto Nuke Duck. He will self-cast ulti, and that fight would have been a massacre on the side of Fnatic. So that's how one key ability and a non-ultimate really decided the title of that fight. Really, when we look at it, I mean, it's, it's such a close game. Fnatic have the scaling advantages. Vitality have the gold lead. They have the dragons in their favor, but... They have the game in their hands, and they just lost track of it at one point. Fnatic with a patient and decisive dragon. This is somehow something they did as well, or Baron rather, in Spring Split. And a couple of really large comebacks where 
It was mainly Reckless carrying on the forefront, some uh, Lulu compositions. Right now we see the entire Vitality lineup being sped up. They're Look. looking for something. Ready to go in at a moment's notice. Two man Baron though. It's been spotted. Which when it comes out, one burned. They have to keep doing it. They can't stop immediately, because otherwise Vitality could just rush down in the mid lane. Baron Health starting to regenerate. We'll go back to full. Yellowstar flash engage. Kassin, great flash over the wall. Nukeduck tries to get in. Kicked out once again. Exhaust goes down. Buying time. Maybe looking for something more. Cabo stunned up. Gomsu into the back line. Bevy dishing out so much damage. Zanyas comes in. Nuke Duck. He hits three, but will it be enough? They're going to burn him down. Bebevin grabs a kill for the team. They're now pushing in. Will they be able to grab the Baron? Vitality. Disaster strikes. They're looking to trade for Elder. Though. Look at the pings on the map. They're going for Elder at this point. Sometimes it is worth trading, especially if you have a lot of early oh, game. No. I guess this takes a while to kill, though. Don't be deceived. But they have the Mountain Dragons, yep. and Fnatic, they're scrambling. They're not even on the Baron yet. Vitality, they're going to get this one for free. Yeah. Clutch call here. This Baron will be traded, though. There's no way Vitality's going to finish it back in. Fnatic win the fight. It is late, too late in the game for them. What an interesting turn of events. The front line is just simply too beefy. Lissandra's moved, like, losing enough damage. Back when she would engage initially in the game, her engage would take down maybe 30, 40% of the enemy's health. Uh, at good times 50, here we see it. It takes too long to deal with Yellow Star and Gamsu in the front line. There's too much continuous damage output in the back line between Reckless and Feverman who go untouched. And Nuketuck is no longer finishing people off with this engage. Earlier in the game, that would have been a dead Yellow Star, dead spirit, which would open up the remaining Vitality members to kind of stream in and finish the fight. But right now, there's just too much damage on the carries. And you can see Febivin, I mean, just zoning out support and AD carry solo. They cannot step forward while those Sand Soldiers are there or risk dying time every time. So great zoning coming in from the team and area control from Fnatic. They know that they're stronger now. Yeah, and it feels like the only way for Vitality to really win right now is a TP flank from behind where they find Febivin off guard and they kind of burn him burn him down in one go. But he has Zonia's cleanse, so there's it's almost impossible. If he spams those two buttons, he will at least get something off. Yeah can make it to safety flash as well. So the window right now is maybe using the burn from this Elder, but you're going up against Baron, so this is an incredibly tough spot for Vitality. Elder Dragon versus Baron. Right now, things seem to be moving in the favor of the Baron team. Fnatic, 3K, gold advantage Vitality, but at 45 minutes, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, Yellowstar's impact in this fight is way larger because he's actually redirecting damage hmm. with the shield, forcing it up on himself, as opposed to Kasing who is amplifying the damage that is being redirected anyways. Like, he's giving some more attack speed with the Ardent Sensor. He's buffing some creeps on side lanes, but right now, the game isn't, more, isn't played anymore on those side lanes. It's raw fights, and Connor just has completely fallen off. He has movement speed, but it only means that Vitality can run towards their death quicker. Really not the place that they want to be, of course. Really as well. With the concussive blows, I mean, CC added to the team, Karma relying on the snare. Her base damage is not enough anymore to compete with the help of ours and the stat lines on the side of Fnatic. Fnatic, though, really taking their time. They know they have advantage, but they're not going to overpress. We're at the point in the game where one team fight could decide everything here, breaking those inhibitors. Crucial for both sides. Hmm. Reckless and the rest of the team pushing up, trying to balance out the wave pressure. You can see Vitality still grouped up. Gomsu pushing on the bottom side, so. One of the later games we've had so far in the summer season, we say that on day two. <laughs> We're <laughs> potentially 14 games in, depending on how the other stream is doing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, not. That's I think this is a good time. Sample size. To be fair, that is a pretty pretty big sample size. That's a week and a half of old LCS. Oh, moving forward, though. Spirit getting aggressive. Kicking forward, Yellowstar in as well. Kasing potentially in trouble. Claw over the wall from Nukeduck. Oh, that means locked up, but the cleanse comes in. Cabo's there too. Bebevin is not dropping. Flash over the wall. Great escape. Fnatic find a fight in the pinch. Azir is doing work. Well, police but Vitality, up. he's trying to turn this one around. Oh, police still alive. The double, double kill. kill. Shift, shift, do it. Equal Aww. exchange in the end. Three for four, actually. Fnatic barely coming out on top of police. Cleaning and up. This is honestly a mistake from Spirit. Every fight Fnatic have won so far, he has positioned where he would look at Nukeduck, look where the claw is coming, and instantly kick him out. Right now, the kick was used on Karma, and they followed up on a pick on the support, who is still tanky enough to buy some time. Feverman found himself exposed, 
had to also leave the fight, do a little bit less damage. And we saw, obviously, if police goes unchecked, he also managed to do a lot of damage in team fights. Police, I mean, he's at this point in the Ezreal. He's got the Mortal Reminder, the Blade of the Rune King. We talked about tank shredding build. Now look at this. This kick right now being down opens an opportunity for Nuktak here with an easy E in. Nobody stops him. He can cast a Feather Rune Lenses, but then has to flash out. Kabashar didn't. He couldn't really flash over himself, he had used his flash already, but then police can clean up. True Shot Barrage, just sing out so much damage there, the auto attack. Held his flash too. Police could have maybe went in there, but obviously if he doesn't get damaged so immediately, he's gonna die there. Uh, likely wouldn't get any objective either, so I think it was the right call, yeah. keeping his flash, because it's not like he's gonna get kills and get more items. So at this point, Summer is worth preserving, because additional kills don't really get too much benefit, unless you're tied into objectives. Yeah. Moving forward, we've officially hit that late game status. Gold evened out, scaling in the favor of Fnatic. Vitality still looking to find that crucial flank, and the fight still going even. We have to see what's next. Baron, Elder Dragon. Remember, 10 minute spawn on that Elder Dragon, so still a long ways away. Neither side has the buffs that they want to end this game. Reckless farming up. He's at six items. Maybe we're going to sell the boots here. Ezreal in a similar boat, everyone in a similar boat. Support still a little bit behind. Yeah, Kevin also, no Magic Pen boots or CDR boots. He's already at 40%, so he can comfortably get the Merc Threads necessary against the Sombra. She gets hit so hard from it, especially if you have to deal with Cleanse, Merc Threads. He gives enough time to get out of the snare, maybe from Maokai, just a fraction of a second earlier to mm -hmm. then flash out. It's those little things that count at this point. Everybody on full items, except supports. They'll get there eventually. Yellowstar offing to buff up the critical chance. Lady Carry with this Zeke's. The one downside, of course, of the Lucian build. This Lucian build with Black Cleaver. Yeah, sits on 50, so he can get to perfect 100 if he fights. Oh, Yellowstar once again, the focus target at the start of this fight. Vitality are grouped up, but the Azir turret Ooh. is there to back him up. Spirit with the kickback. Cabo taken down. Gomsu acting as the front line. Can they burn down Kabu? Nuke took over the wall. They're looking to turn this one. That's a great team play. Top and mid coming together to burn down Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic left a safety of their turret. The whole reason that fight was going well is because they played around the turret, but Nuketuck found a good flank there. The damage is still enough to take down Reckless. It's only Claw, now mid lane is exposed. This is five versus three here. Fevivan still has the scoop available. So we need to see Gams to go in and hoop and scoop from Fevivan. Minion being in. kept alive too. Gonna burn this one down, first inhibitor now yeah. poised to drop. All right, Vitality. They have one more TP to make a minion invulnerable too, to take on the next tower. They should, they could have liked to use it right here. Fevy has to back up, is gonna use the ultimate there. Now a potential window for Nuketuck to go in when the claw is available again. 14 seconds, they're poked out though. Nuketuck with some good soldier management. Yellow Star in nine, eight, seven seconds. Reckless 17, counting down. Spirit locked up, they may look to turn a hero. A lot of damage down onto the jungler, he's burned. Top laner could be next. Febby still dishing out so much. Nuke Duck not opting to engage quite yet. Yellow Star defending who he can. Snare goes up, Nuke Duck. Zonyas comes out, Vitality. That they don't even need it. to win the fight. They're just gonna burn down the Nexus. Fnatic don't even matter for them. The win is all that's in their sights. Cabo, quick, confident look at the camera. That was only game one of the series. I think, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, long, slow game, but both sides fighting to find their win conditions, fighting on even footing for so much of it. Yeah, Fnatic got lost in, in the momentum. They really need to know that all these team fights that they won, they played super slow, controlled, and they were all kind of in the same plane. Right now, right there, they split off and they allowed Nuketuck to really expose three members while Feverman was in no position to enter that part of the fight, engage, scoop him out, or do anything because he was playing at the comfort of his tower, just backing away at the front line. So Fnatic were not on the same page there. Yeah, and I think, I mean, that's something you cannot afford simply in those late game scenarios where one, we talked about it earlier in the game, where one mistake, one extra alt target coming in from Nuketuck will decide those team fights. Fnatic were able to bust that win out and then later in the game, those mistakes start to show through. Yellowstar maybe a little bit too forward. Over aggression on the Cabo Shard. Waiting for that uh, revive coming in from the Guardian Angel. And yeah, Guardian Angel was crucial. So they have both uh, 
both their CC frontliners, also the ones that mm. really controlled the game in, in the early game with the 1 3 1, managed to buy so much time. They have the revive from Guardian Angel, I think it's like four seconds. Uh, then they have Nuketuk being able to buy five seconds for himself, where everybody's just posturing. If you're, if you're fanatic, yes, there's a fly on my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like, ag- how serious it's can I so be? It's so aggressive. It's just, oh, yeah, it's all yeah. up in your business. It's cologne, by the way. It's not, I actually showered today. Okay, too, so it's good. Just, all right, uh, just continue. get the double check in there. But Thank you for pointing that out. I was trying to be professional here. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> somebody sees uh, a fly and has to giggle about it. Well, yeah, a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> all right, we've lost composure. But for Vitality and Fnatic, they're going to have to find a way to come back yep. to this one focused because that was a long, grueling game. What do you think is going through their heads right now on both sides? I mean, I think both teams can be happy with parts of the game. Um, but there's also crucial mistakes that they made. But what we lack in composure, these teams definitely had throughout the entirety of the game. Fnatic knew when to play passive at the start. They struck back with a really good Baron that Vitality kind of handed to them. So Vitality needs to look at that phase. How did they manage to lose control of the game? Um, I think their draft worked out. They had a clear goal. They played it out well. Um, overall, it was a fun game to watch. Yeah, Good it's fights. very interesting. But of course, for a closer look at Vitality's game one win, 